Stockton have been there before. I think Utah's going to be very difficult to beat tonight because they have to win. I have to agree with Danny. Uh, they're going to come out. They know what they have to do. The guy, I think John and Carl are going to step up, and Horny, Horny Sweat, they're going to step up and get the job done tonight. Yeah, Jeff Warner said one of the most unfortunate nicknames in the biz. And, uh, <laughs> certainly true. A bit of non-playoff news tonight. Kentucky head coach Rick Pitino, who last month turned down a reported five-year, $20 million deal to coach the New Jersey Nets, told reporters today that he is considering an offer by the Nets to become head coach, part owner, with control of player personnel. I have not met with them, contrary to reports, but I am going to meet with them. And then I'm going to take a week. This is the seven years of my life. I'm not going to make a spontaneous decision. I'm going to take a week. And I'm going to come back and say, yes, no, and it's going to be over right away. Uh, as soon as I come back, it'll be over right away. I'll either be the uh, coach of New Jersey or I'll be staying in Kentucky, hopefully, uh, for a long time. One of the panelists tonight has played for Rick Pitino in the NBA. I think it was you, Patrick Ewing, for a couple <laughs> of years. What were your memories of those two seasons? Uh, I enjoyed playing for Rick. I thought he, you know, he's he's an intense coach. Uh, he's definitely he makes you work hard. He's prepared. Um, the thing, you know, the difference is, that, you know, in the NBA and the college, they they're gonna be trapping a lot. We trapped a lot. We ran. We run. They thought Pat Pat Riley, Pat Riley's practices was hard. I think <laughs> Rick's practice was the hardest. Uh, but I, I think he's gonna. New Jersey needs a coach like that, and, and he's definitely gonna help them. How about your coaching situation now? Jeff Van Gundy is retained. How much lobbying did you do? <laughs> I didn't think I needed to do it. I, I didn't need to do any lobbying. Um, you know, I, I, I let my feelings, be, you know, be known early. I thought that Jeff was an outstanding coach, and, you know, they needed to go ahead and give him the job. We didn't need to, you know, wait around and, and fiddle around. Jeff is a great coach, and we all respect him, and we all enjoy working for him. We're not done talking about coaches yet either, folks. Meantime, in Charlotte, it appears that Dave Cowens will take over for Alan Bristow. Cowens has been a San Antonio assistant for the last two years, was a player coach with the Celtics in 78-79. He's expected to be named next week. When we come back, we're going to spotlight one of the keys to Seattle's postseason hot streak. Sam Perkins trying to shoot the lights out of the Delta Center, where about 20,000 will gather for Game 3. Keep it here. Cruising spirit lives. Royal Star by Yamaha. Get out of rough, tall grass and weeds like this. You don't need one of these. You need one of these. The Weed Terminator. The Weed Terminator replacement head with serrated edge blades cuts through tall weeds and grass with ease. The Weed Terminator replacement head installs quickly and easily and changing replacement blades is a snap. After all, there's a lot better things to be doing with your time. Available at finer home improvement centers and retailers worldwide. Great big jobs of greasy, slimy garbage scum. Kinky, sticky, pipe big gum. Barbecued, fishy crumbs. Can't remember when I've had such good clean fun. The Coleman Clean Machine. Oh boy, here comes doggy do as thick as fudge. Clumps of mud and axle sludge. Stuff that used to never budge. Now I think I'll suck it to a hornet's nest. The Coleman Power Made Clean Machine. The first name in pressure washers. They've carried your bologna sandwiches, PB&J's on white, and Mom's special tuna salad. Punch, Starsky, Hutch and the Angels. Only the coolest shows made it to the metal screen. You carried them then, we carry them now. TNT's Lunchbox TV. You can still see your lunch pail friends weekdays on TNT. There is Sam Perkins getting loose at the Delta Center. He's hit 59% of his field goals off the bench in this series, six out of nine from three-point range. We welcome you back to our Atlanta studios on our final night of playoff coverage here on TNT. With some players, you can look at the expression on their faces and tell how a game's going. Not so with Sam Perkins, who up 20 or down 20 
always looks like he's ready to grab a piece of couch for a cat nap. Then he sets up from 22 feet and flicks a three-pointer that breaks your heart. Reggie Theus with a little Q&A on the guy they call Big Smooth. Big Smooth. The reason we call him Smooth is because, you know, everybody says eyes low, and he always lay back. And he shoots the, he shoots the ball so smooth where he just lays out his hand and it goes through the net. Swish. So everybody nicknames him Smooth because he do everything smooth and slow. Sam gives us just a tremendous ability to change the game in a lot of ways. Post up, pick and roll, three point shooting. Uh, and he's one of our smarter defensive rotators and understands the concept of, me of maybe disrupting the game if we want to get more aggressive when that team goes in. Sam, you're a pretty quiet guy now, but you're on a team with a lot of loud personalities. How do you fit in? We have so many guys with different personalities. We have, I think probably Irvin is probably the quietest, but uh, I'm somewhere next to him. But we have, you know, two ends of the spectrum where we got Crazy Gary, Raddick, and I'm over there somewhere. And as you get older, you tend to get quieter because uh, these guys are so loud and uh, pervasive. All right, the, the first thing they say when I get here is that you got to ask Sam about his haircut. <laughs> I've had from afros to twists to, to fades to cutting it all off, and uh, it, it's just one of those things where if I got it, I'm going to try it. So um, I, I like it long, but I'm uh, and then during the summer, it's going to dread up, I guarantee you. <laughs> I was watching you shoot jumpers at practice here. You still got the long lefty and flat-footed jump shot. It, kind of comes and goes and uh if i hit the front rim my coach is mad at me so i try to get enough lift on it and even though flat-footed i try to uh use the upper body just to get it through there and and, and it works it, it happens for us when uh in such certain situations you're the only guy on this team with finals experience how have you been able to give advice to the younger players when i first got here um this team had um, really no idea in a sense um, what it was to, to be in a finals or a conference finals. So as time went on with the disappointments in the two years, I think guys started to realize that, you know, you had to work and you had to work as a team. And now we've got a team that is very complementary to each other. And we go out there and play well through the good and the bad. All right, Sam Perkins can do a whole lot of things for a team like the Seattle Supersonics. It's one of those intangibles. You, you, Peyton and Kemp get all the headlines, but it's yeah. guys like Sam who really can do some damage. When you talk about X factors, you definitely have to talk about Sam Perkins. I think it's because of his size and his versatility is the reason he creates a lot of problems on the offensive, uh, offensive end, especially for the big men. Let's take a look at the video. Now, see, Patrick will tell you big men do not like to go out and defend on the perimeter. Why? Because they don't want to get out there. Now, look at this. Malone is going to come out there. He has to recognize and give the respect to Perkins, but his versatility can put it on the floor. But I think Sam is truly at his best on the block. Look at that 6'10 frame, that long arm's very difficult to block. That fadeaway left. You know, Cheryl obviously leading us right into the big fella <laughs> feeling about the joys of defending Sam Perkins when you have to do that. It can be a headache, right? Well, yeah, you know, Sam's an outstanding shooter. You know, like Cheryl said, um, you know, a big man is taught to run back into the paint and then come out and Sam, he runs right to the three-point line, so you go to the paint to try to stop the guard from penetrating, then you have to get back to him. He's out there spotting up, getting ready for that three, so it makes it very difficult to check him. He's so versatile. Yeah, does he lull you to sleep, though, sometimes? It looks like he's not paying attention half the time? <laughs> no, he's, when, once he's on the court, when you're in there, you know, banging with him, he, he's awake. Why didn't you ever learn to shoot that three? That's what I want to know. know. Every, every so time hard I, to defend, every, shoot it. Every time I try to shoot it, you guys tell me, get in the, get in the block. Yeah, that's shoot where those you're supposed jokes. to be. How about the Gary Payton factor in this series? In fact, through the whole postseason, he has made this Well, you guys can talk all you want about Sam Perkins. <laughs> Gary Payton is the guy. I mean, this guy's tremendous. I, you know, he won the second... Uh, all the second team defensive NBA player of the year. defensive yeah. player of the year. He's finally starting to get the recognition. Three years ago, we played them in the finals, Western Conference finals, and uh, Kevin Johnson was lighting up Gary Payton. And I said, Gary, don't be so upset. You can't guard Kevin Johnson. And Gary said, Well, he can't guard me either. I said, 
Gary, we're not trying to guard you. We want you to shoot. <laughs> well, now every team in the NBA is guarding Gary Payton. He is the key to their team, and uh, with all his energy on the defensive end, he's definitely the MVP of that team. Rapidly rising in the Danny Ainge All-Oregon team, too, the pride of Eugene, Oregon. And uh, this is something that we've, we're always eagerly anticipating. Right. Right. Well, Gary's moved up to number well, look two. Look who's on the top of the league. list. Well, you know, I figure that, uh, you know, things I got on Gary, I got two NBA championship rings, and I got two more major league home runs than him. So uh, <laughs> if, if he wins an NBA championship this year, he'll move me down to number two. But I'll always be ahead of AC. He's <laughs> <laughs> AC. I hope you're watching. Well, folks, I tell you, certainly a consensus pick on the all-Louisiana team, Carl Malone, the mailman once again seeking his first appearance in the NBA Finals. We'll have to rally the Jazz from a 2-0 deficit. You're going to hear from him next. Get out of rough, tall grass and weeds like this. You don't need one of these. You need one of these. The Weed Terminator. The Weed Terminator replacement head with serrated edge blades cuts through tall weeds and grass with ease. The Weed Terminator replacement head installs quickly and easily, and changing replacement blades is a snap. After all, there's a lot better things to be doing with your time. Available at finer home improvement centers and retailers worldwide. I'd hate to tangle with a guy your size. He's the eye of the hurricane. He's the calm in the storm. He's the guy who gets your blood hot when he gives an icy stare. We hit it. And each time he enters a scene, something kicks up inside him. Experience the rush that only a night of Clint Eastwood movies can give you. One week from tonight, here on TNT. If you're upside down in your car, that means you owe more than it's worth. You need to run, hop, roll, or even fly to Adam Chevy Ray Tyler Belton for a new car, truck, or van with payments that fit your budget. Check out the Chevy Lumina, Chevy S10, Geo Metro, or Prism. Plus, we've got loads of conversion vans. It's easy to drive away in a new car, truck, or van from Adam Chevy Ray Tyler Belton because we got financing options the other guys don't. So see us today and we'll put you right side up at Adam Chevy Ray Town and Adam Chevy Belton. We make it so simple. When you and your family are on the road, the overriding feeling should be peace of mind. If there is an accident, Shelter Insurance will be there to take care of all the details quickly and completely with rates that are sensible and discounts to give you the breaks you deserve. Shelter Insurance. We'll always be there for you. In Blue Springs, call David Siegfried or Steve Taylor. In Independence, call Jim Schultz or Mike Yasso. Temple Square, certainly one of the landmarks of Salt Lake City, Utah, as we get ready for Game 3 in the Western Conference Finals. And we welcome you back to our Atlanta studios, Ernie Johnson and Cheryl Miller and Danny Ainge and the big fella from the New York Knicks, Patrick Ewing. Carl Malone has in his own way become a Utah landmark over the past 11 seasons. Nine times an All-Star, he's a model of consistency and durability. Hasn't missed a game in four years, has only missed four in his career. And now as he once again pursues his first ever appearance in the NBA Finals, it is clear from his conversation with Reggie Theus that even if there is not a championship in his future, he will treasure the journey that began in Summerfield, Louisiana, and will lead to the Hall of Fame. Carl, what do you like most about your basketball life? I gotta start with, this was never a dream. It was never a goal. I don't have that storybook ending that I went to bed, you know, I had four brothers, four sisters, single parent. Daddy passed away when I was young, so I started playing basketball to save the family. That wasn't, that's not a storybook in and of my life. So I think what I like most about it is everybody said I could never do it. And I love proving people wrong, you know. And I had made a promise to myself that if whatever team I got drafted by, I want to be with them the rest of my career, and it's happening here. And just the peace of mind, living here and away from everything else, is what I like about it and the group of guys that we have. We got a group of guys that when I finish playing the game, I want to be able to call them up and say, hey, you know, let's get together. And you played this game. You played with guys before that you could care less if you ever heard their name again. Carl, you and John Stockton have been together for 11 years. Tell me about your relationship with John. Well, you know, being a teammate of, of John have shed a light on 
on life. I'm from the South, predominantly all black where I'm from, and he's from Spokane, all white. So we share a lot of views sometimes on the black-white issue. That seemed to be the, the main topic. And we talk about that a lot. He shed light on his side. I shed light on my side. We always come to a happy medium. But it's not a lot of communication when we're out there playing. It's kind of an instinct thing. And when it works, it's unbelievable. And not only that, though, I realize that we're attached forever. If we, if we went to the Hall of Fame one day, they, they want both of us to be there. Uh, and I understand that. But when you sit down and think about it, and matter of fact, he's my, he's my daughter, my four-year-old godparent, him and his wife. So it's just not basketball. And the amazing thing about it, we very seldom talk about basketball. It's always, God, what do you want to do when you finish playing? Hey, let's do this or whatever. And, those are the kind of relationships that you think about when you finish playing the game. And nowadays, it's kind of corny to talk like that, to hear two grown men talking about how much they like each other because people get the wrong perception. But it's part of it. And we're retired together, but I I'm getting older now. I don't have time to break in a younger guard, and he don't have time to break in a younger forward. So when he finished, I'm finished. A couple of guys here who have played against Carl Malone. Danny, number one. How does it differ when you're sitting at the at courtside doing a game watching Carl Malone as opposed to being out there with him? Aside from the beating you might take, but the kind of the kind of game he plays. Well, a lot less bruises for sure. <laughs> Ernie, but you know, Carl Malone is a guy that came into the league, couldn't shoot outside, wasn't a very good free throw shooter, wasn't a good passer. Everybody double teamed him every time. Become a great shooter, become a great passer in the half court offense. Has done everything to build up his body to become the best power forward in the NBA. And you've got to respect the guy. He's only missed four games, as said, in the NBA career, and uh, a guy that I admire just from his effort and intensity. Is there a guy who wants to win more, Patrick Ewing, than Carl Malone? You mean other than, other, than, other than me? Other than me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, Carl, you know, like Danny says, you know, you have to respect him. He's done it. I remember when we first came into the league, we came into the league together. Like you said, Danny said, you know, he couldn't shoot. All he did was, you know, run the floor and dunk. And he's worked on his game so much. Uh, and, and now he's a great shooter. He's, he's just a great all-around player. And, uh, you know, and both he and Danny, they compliment, uh, both he and John, I'm sorry, they compliment <laughs> each other so you well. Me in that and, you know, I like that. He's a great player. He's a definitely the best power forward in the game. What did you learn from your dream team experience with him? The, what did I learn? <laughs> Not too much. We, just, we had a lot of fun, and we, um, you know, we banged and bumped and just kicked around. Learn how to drive a truck. <laughs> no, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't want to get in there. And, and your affinity for country music certainly comes from Carl Malone. Let's go to the other half of that, John yeah. Stockton. Mm -hmm. And the first two series, this guy was gangbusters. Oh, He's yeah. had his trouble in the Seattle series, seven turnovers in game two. Well, Carl Malone said that the Sonics have really harassed John Stockton. I mean, of course, they're going to do that defensively. Uh, their game plan is simply to wear him down, mentally and physically. And let's take a look at what they like to do. Now, you know that Utah likes to use the high side screen. As soon as you get over there on the sideline, here comes the trap, and they're going to trap you hard, and they're going to be physical, and that's exactly what they've done in both the series. Now, in the second shot here is the same play almost, but watch Nate McMillan. All right, he's going to wait for John Stockton to reverse the dribble, punch the ball, and now he's off and running at the other end. But this is what I'd like to see John Stockton do some more of, moving without the ball, using Carl Malone to shield his defender and get to the basket. I'll tell you what, folks, in the time that these teams have had off this week, Jerry Sloan has been asked quite a few times about the trouble John Stockton is having. He says, don't lay it all on Stockton's doorstep. When you've got four other guys standing around, mm -hmm. it's very tough for a point guard like Stockton to do what he needs to do. We're going to be back to wrap things up here in just a minute. Here's a little geography quiz for you. What's the mountain range there, guys, in Utah? Cheating, I know That'd that. That'd be the Wasatch Mountains. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Jerry. Later. <laughs> Hi, I'm Payne Stewart. Everybody knows that I love to play golf. But when I'm at home, I love to work in my yard, too. And after all, who spends more time working on grass than I do? The Grass Terminator replacement head uses a new concept, multi-edged line for smoother, cleaner cutting. And the Grass Terminator's unique recessed head protects the trimmer line from breaking. The Grass Terminator. With a backyard like this, I need all the help I can get. Available at finer home improvement centers and retailers worldwide.
The Pullman Power Made Clean Machine. The first name and pressure washers. Honey, Honey. Are you okay? I'm fine. Relax. It's not broken. The doctor said I was pretty lucky. Does it hurt? What'd they give you? Tylenol. Extra strength. Really? Yeah. With everything they have here? The Tylenol is working great. Let's go home. In hospitals, emergency medicine doctors recommend Tylenol the most. You sure you're okay? I'll be fine. But we should talk about the car. In a time when the quickest draw made the laws, he was faster, smarter, and better looking than anybody else. Put the gun down. That's why Briscoe County Jr. is the best. One part Bond, one part Indiana Jones, and 100% cool. Sign on for the adventures of Briscoe County Jr. every Saturday morning at 11, exclusively on TNT. At the Delta Center, the Rain Man getting loose, Sean Kemp. Boy, he came up huge late in game two. A couple of big buckets and swiped a cross-court pass by John Stockton, helping Seattle to a 2-0 lead. Here's the All-NBA first and second team. You see Sean Kemp on the second team, but in the first, Pippen and Malone, David Robinson in the middle, and Michael Jordan and Penny Hardaway. The second team made up of Kemp and Grant Hill at the forward spots. The Dreams in the middle, Gary Payton and John Stockton. The guards guys are going to be going head-to-head -head tonight in Game 3 of the Western Conference Finals. Guys, you take a look at the All-NBA team. Any arguments in there? Absolutely. The Jordan thing's got to stick right out at you. No, what's your big argument? Hey, what about Charles Barkley? He had a terrific year this year. Oh, come on, man. Charles belongs on there. Don't Play try to defense? tell me Reggie belonged on there, either. Uh, did, I, now, did I even bring Reggie's no. name up? But now that you mentioned it... <laughs> Neither one of them played any defense. Now, first of all, I think I should be on there. I was going to bring that up. <laughs> Patrick, you play defense? All right, then you're not the best defensive set in the league. I just said in one and two. <laughs> tell, tell me what we're thinking about game three here. Does Utah get right back in this thing, or does Seattle make it pretty much case closed, guys? I think Utah's right there. I think Utah has a good chance of winning both games in Utah. I think definitely they're going to come out strong today and win this one tonight. I'm not, I don't think they're going to win the series. I think Seattle's definitely going to beat them, but uh, they're going to make a strong showing tonight. I think it's San Antonio, I'm not San Antonio. I, I think don't like Utah, San Antonio. I think it's Utah, if Utah lets uh, Seattle hang around, they can steal it. The Seattle Supersonics have not lost on the road. The Utah Jazz have not lost at home. Gee, something's got to give. I think that's what they say. Game three is coming up next from the Delta Center in Salt Lake City, Utah. Thanks for joining us on our playoff finale on TNT. Dick Zuck and Hubie Brown are next. No matter what kind of call your business makes, AT&T stands behind it. This is the most powerful communications network in the world. And if your call ever runs into trouble, the network sends you around it. Or if a cable gets cut, it won't affect you. No other network handles so much business, and no other network guarantees all of it. Only AT&T stands behind every kind of call your business makes. Where does your phone company stand? AT&T, for the life of your business. You know, when you have something special, you don't just throw it away. Of course, years ago, we thought we could throw away anything, just use it and, and trash it. Well, we are all a little smarter now. Instead of those one-shot batteries, I use Renewal from Railback. Advanced alkaline power. You don't just trash them after one shot. You renew them, and they come back strong. They say the world throws out 20 billion batteries a year. We can do a lot better. Play it smart. Railback, renew them. Now at Pep Boys, get a $5 rebate on all Raybestos Pro Stop lifetime brakes. Car, truck, import, or domestic. That's $5 back on Raybestos lifetime brakes. You'll never have to buy brakes again. Pep Boys, everything but gas. Bex, the original import. Taste German beer at its finest. Bex, America's favorite German beer. Hello? What in tarnation? Morning. I'm here to prove nobody kills a root like Roundup. Ah, uh, weed killers are weed killers. I just used one. Raymond, they only scorch the top. I can still see all the roots. You can? Yep. It is Roundup. It kills the whole weed, including the roots. It does? Come on down. See for yourself. 
Where did the roots go? Weed heaven, Raymond. The following is an exclusive presentation of Turner Sports. With their title hopes ticking away, Utah returns home down two games to none to Seattle. Carl Malone and John Stockton once again must spark the Jazz before their time expires. After receiving their wake-up call earlier in the playoffs, the Sonics have reeled off eight straight wins, making the NBA world sit up and take notice. This is the Delta Center in Salt Lake City, Utah, and the Utah Jazz are hoping that home court is a charm tonight as they hope to get back into the series in the Western Conference Final after the Seattle Sonics impressively captured the first two games in Seattle. Welcome to the Western Conference Finals Game 3 between the Seattle Sonics and the Utah Jazz. Seattle up 2 to nothing. And hello again, everyone. I'm Dick Stockton along with Hubie Brown. A lot of people are calling the Western Finals an undercard, all the attention with the Bulls and the Orlando Magic. But the Seattle Sonics have captured a lot of people's attention with their devastating defensive pressure and their quickness, Hubie. What precisely have they done to the Utah Jazz so far? Well, I think you have to say, Dick, they're hitting on all cylinders, and they're doing it at both ends of the floor. We'd like to show you the stats. The field goal percentage, 53 to 40. The reason why that is so big, Utah's the number one shooting team in this league. And then the three-point shooting, devastating. Utah had only 19. Four players in double figures. And we always say your three main guys must step up, and they are doing it. Peyton, Kemp, and then also Shrimp. But then the bonus is Perkins off the bench. And then they are a runaway in the open floor where they lead the league in forcing turnovers. But now, Hubie, we come to uh, Salt Lake City where the Jazz are a perfect 6-0 in the playoffs. How do you think the change of venue will affect Utah in particular tonight? Well, I think everybody is looking for the energy points. They need the intangibles. Every loose ball, good blocking out, second shot. Because up until now, Carl Malone is the only starter playing with his season stats. 27 points, 11 rebounds. He's getting to the foul line 11 times a night. That's terrific. But Stockton and Hornacek must step up and shoot over 50% and shoot over 40 in threes. When the traps come, and they're coming at half court, and on the pick and rolls, you must find the free people. Should be pointed out that Seattle is undefeated in their own right on the road at 4-0, but let's talk more about the stockton Payton matchup. No one is playing more consistent basketball in the postseason in the West than Gary Payton. Now, Gary Payton's at the top of the game, the 20 points, the 47-7, and the four steals. But give Stockton his due. He's being trapped a minimum of 35 to 40 times, so he is only getting nine shot attempts. The difference, Peyton is getting 16. So naturally, his scoring is going to be down. This puts the pressure on the bench to step up and someone else to fill in as a third scorer. We have to keep in mind that right now, they've just held serve, and until one team wins a game on the other team's court, everything is still according to form. Coming up, game three of the Western Conference Final. You know what John Stockton's three sons are feeling about this game. We'll be back. You can just pick up a Napa part and feel the quality. When you look at the price, it feels even better. Pick up your share of quality products at Napa's Red, White, and Blue sale. With Napa Motor Oil, only 89 cents a quart. Contoured style bug shields for a low $29.99. And a combo pack of no-touch tire and wheel cleaners, just $2.99 after rebate. So come save some green at Napa's Red, White, and Blue sale. America running. Looking for something? Yeah. 
That dime from Sprint's long-distance plan? Having trouble finding it, huh? Yeah. Well, that's because depending on when you call, the Sprint Sense rate isn't always a dime. It could be a quarter or 65 cents on calls to Canada. Oh. Try AT&T True Reach Savings. On average, most people can save more than with Sprint Sense when they spend $25 a month on calls in the U.S. Plus, you'll always save more on calls to Canada. Wow. I found what I'm looking for. That's your true choice, AT&T. Some people say I've got too much on my mind. Movies, music, toys, correction. There's only one thing in my head. The championship. The championship. Because I got ten fingers and no rings. And I love jewelry. That's what's on my mind. This is my planet. You got room for a brother on your planet. It's time you settled down and got married. A little proposal to make. A wife. A family. Kathy. Maybe a job. <clears throat> Here, drink something. Thanks. Bitter beer, baby. Get protection against bitter beer. Drink Keystone. America's least bitter beer. So there's never a bad taste, never a bitter face. We can still date other people, right? Stop making faces. Drink Keystone. Back here at the Delta Center, I'm Reggie Theus, and Carl Malone, a veteran of 11 years, is the granite of one of the most successful NBA franchises. And along with that success comes a lot of great expectations. And down 2-0, they're really feeling the pressure, and Carl loves it. I feel the pressure, but I like it. Because, you know, sometimes you cannot be ready to play this game, and that's, we need this game. So, the shots might not be there, but effort make up for a lot of things. And if you have the effort and you're ready to play, we'll be fine. So I saw that pressure right now. It's essential that we get game three, without a doubt, because these guys are a great road team. They come in and get game number three, and they'll play as loose as they want to be because they're going back home, and anything can happen. So we need game three, without a doubt. It's a must, as far as I'm concerned. The players told me in the locker room that the only pressure they're really feeling is the pressure to continue their great play in this building where there are 6-0 and in the playoffs. We'll be right back after this break. You're waiting for your blind date. You're scanning the room. You've got minty, fresh breath, and you're oozing charm. Then it hits you. Larry? <laughs> oh! Bitter beer face! Don't let bitter beer make a bad first impression. Drink Keystone, America's least bitter beer, so there's never a bad taste, never a bitter face. Take this. It's always brought me luck. <laughs> Stop making faces. Drink Keystone. The new Ford Taurus has people talking. Road & Track says the new V6 is a high-strung engine born to gallop. Chris Hayward said, I'm surprised. A car this comfortable has that much pickup. Automobile Magazine named Taurus Design of the Year. And Ray Wells agrees. The new shape is just fantastic. Ford finally got me. The new Ford Taurus. Now with $600 cash back, Taurus starts at just $17,945. Or get 2.9% APR financing. Hurry. Offer ends soon. <laughs> La dolce vita, volare la noche caliente en su esplendor suave. God bless America. 100% cotton, cut for comfort, fruit of the loom. Really, really comfortable underwear. Of all the laws of nature, you are my least it's favorite. favorite. It's not your fault you exist, but gravity? You are no friend of mine. You do not belong in my house, my so house. you show up every morning. I defy you, gravity. You are not my obstacle. That grin you see, that's me knowing I will beat you. If only for an Even instant. Even if it's just for an instant. Foot Locker, where it all begins and gravity ends. Ernie Johnson back at you from Atlanta. The Seattle Supersonics took game one of this series by 30. The Utah Jazz had an eight-point lead going to the fourth quarter of game two. 
Sonics came back and beat them to take a 2-0 lead. Coming up next, it is Game 3 of the Western Conference Final. Patrick Ewing, Danny Ainge, Cheryl Miller, and I will be back at halftime. Enjoy the game, everybody. The NBA Playoffs on TNT are brought to you by Keystone Light, America's least bitter beer. By Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By STP, makers of Son of a Gun Protectant and new Son of a Gun Citrus Cleaner. And by IBM, solutions for a small planet. It's time you settled down and got married. A little proposal to make. A wife, a family. Kathy? Maybe a job. <clears throat> Here, drink something. Thanks. Bitter beer, baby. Get protection against bitter beer. Drink Keystone, America's least bitter beer. So there's never a bad taste, never a bitter face. We could still date other people, right? Stop making faces. Drink Keystone. These days, you're working harder than ever. Yeah. You need a truck that does, too. Don't move. Introducing the all-new 1997 Ford F-150. With even more horsepower and torque. And all the legendary strength of an F-Series. Better get to the Grand Canyon before we do. The all-new Ford F-150. STP Son of a Gun Protectant makes vinyl truly shine. Leather more lustrous. And rubber more brilliant and beautiful. It works so well, in fact, some people even use it on cars. Son of a Gun Protectant and new Son of a Gun Tire Glaze by STP. Back at the Delta Center, where the Sonics won by 30 points in Game 1 and came from 8 behind after 3 to win 91 to 87 in Game Number 2. Same starting lineup for the third consecutive game of the series. What are the key matchups, Hubie? Right here, Deadlift Shrimp is having a terrific series. The consistency of the 16 points and going to him under pressure on the post-up. He has been a quiet assassin throughout the series, and a lot of people talk about. The Malones and the Stocktons and the Kemps and the Paytons, but Deadlift Shrimp, big reason why the Sonics are where they are right now. The officials working tonight's Game 3. As you look at the Utah, perfect record in the Delta Center in the playoffs, and Seattle, perfect on the road, so something's got to give tonight. Mike Mathis, Hugh Hollins, and Jack Knees working this game, and we're set to get underway for Game number 3. Remember, the... Sonics have won eight in a row in the playoffs. Their only defeat in postseason was a game two setback at the Key Arena to the Sacramento Kings in the first round. What you have to watch for tonight is the Seattle quickness. The trapping of John Stockton as he comes across half court. When Utah has the advantage, four against three, can they get a good shot and if not, take it strong to the basket? So far, every team that has faced the Sonics have been unable to solve that, and that includes the Houston Rockets. And in Game 3 of the previous series, the Sonics won the first two and won Game 3 after withstanding a challenge. They took the best shot Houston gave them, and they steadied themselves and won on the road. Here's Hornacek inside. Out to Carl Malone and a bump travel call on Malone. See, that's a stunner because... You saw the trap down in low on Hornacek. On the pass out, if you don't have an open shot, reverse the ball as they're running to you to another man. Gary Payton, averaging 22 points a game in postseason, led the Sonics with 18 points and had eight assists in the last game, feeds Percy Hawkins for the first point. See, they brought Shrimp on that baseline screen. They double-teamed deadlift. 
and he can pass. Not only can he score, he can pass, and he can handle the ball. Isn't much that Detlef Schrempp can do at 6'10". Pretty imposing forward. Here's Hornacek going in for one of the rare layups that he's been able to get. See, that's that second pass, Dick. Out of the traps, the first pass, they put so much pressure on the rotation, you've got to make the second pass. Three-point basket by Gary Payton. So Payton, who is 44% from threes in this series, gives the Sonics a three-point lead. His overall game has just been devastating in this series. Here's Chris Morris. He's going for three and short. And Hornacek with the hook shot gets the hoop. But the Jazz are going to need the small forward to get points for them tonight. Five for the score. Kemp handling it for the first time. Throws the ball away to Morris inside. Stockton right now. The Sonics unable to trap him. And Malone put up the shot inside in a hurry. And a timeout was called by the Jazz before the tie-up. It's 20-second timeout. See, Carl Malone is stunned that he did not get on the foul line. And he, he's made a comment to Mike Mathis because on the play, the first pound down, they call the travel. And he feels that as he ran to this post up right here, he feels that he gets hit. Well, you could have called it either way if you're Mike Mathis. That could have been a block. And then also, if you're a Seattle fan, naturally. It was a charge. <laughs> Malone, as you pointed out, went to the line 16 times and converted 12 of them in game two after going only one for six in game number one. But he has scored big time, and you mentioned with the one Jazz player to do it, 21 in game one, and 32 points and 13 fours in Monday's game two. The mailman is doing what he's supposed to do, Dick. When you say 27 points, then you say 11 rebounds, and then you say 11 foul shot attempts a game. I mean, what else is the guy supposed to do for you? He just needs some help. And we're saying that. Hornacek <laughs> <laughs> handling the ball on the perimeter. Stockton coming around, denying him effectively as Peyton. Picked up by Kemp on the double team. Malone, baseline shot. Good defense by Urban Johnson, but Carl Malone gets the rebound. Still no foul, and Malone's got to be getting a little angry. Yeah, I, I, I would say so. I'd say that he's, he's going to be a little upset here. And the main thing is, is to calm down just go with the flow and don't force. Well, they're letting him play at the outset because Detlef Schrempf was hit on that jump shot and no foul was called on that play. Well, we say this all the time at playoffs. You adjust to the personality after the first five or six minutes that the game is being refereed. These guys are not going to change. So now you must change if you're going to stay in this game and you are going to play to your maximum potential. You cannot get riled. Carl Malone picked up the personal, and Irvin Johnson, who has averaged four points, doesn't play that much time, but is still a, an impressive shot blocker inside. The thing I like about this guy, he only plays 17 minutes, Dick, but he gives them five rebounds in 17 minutes and two shot blocks, as well as scoring. Oh, oh, well, forget that. Gary McCoy, the Sonics in front. And they whistle and they foul. Yeah, Gary Payton grabbed John Stockton, took him to the ground. Uh, Jackie Nees caught that. He, he was right on that. So Peyton and Malone have personal fouls in the early going for Utah. Now just keep an eye on this. Watch what happens. See, Peyton grabs him right here. See, Stockton ran him into the screen, then Peyton grabbed all of them. In college wrestling, it's two points on a takedown. Well, you know, you always test the reps early, Dick. <laughs> right. It looked like Gary was doing just that. Carl Malone misses. He's 0 for 4 from the field. Irvin Johnson was in his face. So Malone trying to find the range. Sonics lead by three with two and a half minutes gone by in the opening period. Deadlift Shrimp hits the jump shot smoothly, and the Sonics are up by five. The difference in the two games that we were doing, game two and this one already, at one end they're getting wide open shots, and at the other everything is a struggle. Mike Mathis calling a foul inside, and Irvin Johnson with an elbow. So Johnson picking up the personal foul. George Carl, who told us today, I'm looking for one win. It's no surprise on the road. would have a 3-1 to one lead going back home. That's nice. He's not looking to sweep again. Huh? No, well, you know, like he said, all he wants is at the end of the night, they walked out of the gym and they said, listen, they beat us as long as we left it all out on the floor. Carl Malone foul as he drives the lane, and the personal is against Irvin Johnson, who has picked up two quick fouls. So we may see Sam Perkins make an early appearance. Now, see, George can afford 
to allow uh, Johnson to stay in the game and get three if he wants to. Otherwise, he can come with Perkins. Uh, it, it might not be, because if you think about it, he's rather expendable. Uh, in, in the course of the season, Sam always averaged over 30 minutes, and in this series, Perkins is averaging right at his 30 minutes. Malone is a 59% free throw shooter in the series, and that's what he's been in the playoffs. At times, has struggled from the free throw line. Jerry Sloan today telling us that uh, I'll be as interested in you to see how we react against the uh, tremendous quickness and defensive pressure that the Sonics put on. Well, it, it, everyone will say the same thing. On the catch, if you don't have a wide open shot, you have to move the ball. And that's what he's concerned about. And he's concerned about all the loose balls and then putting a body on people and keeping them off the offensive boards. One out of two for Malone. The lead is four for the Sonics. They go into Shrimp, who's guarded by Chris Morris. Hayden, who's already hit one three, is short with this one. And here is Hornacek. Out of the pack, Stockton inside, and Malone going in. Bangs with Kemp and the basket. No question, they're going to let him play tonight, and the fans will appreciate that as Malone gets his first basket. Kemp looking inside, nothing doing. Shrem travels as he tried to get around Mark. If I'm Seattle, I like, I like what we're doing defensively right now. We're forcing him into very difficult shots. What we have to do right now, they are running more in the early part of this game than they have in games one and games two. Jazz trying to get back and win this game number three. They've been in the playoffs 13 straight years, never been in the finals. Goaltending has been called against Irvin Johnson and credit the basket to Malone. Now, just watch. You're going to see that was a dump down to Carl, and you can see the ball was on its way down. What they did is they back screen, and Carl went right to the front of the rim. Stockton, double team now on Peyton, who puts it up with a left-handed shot. This is offensive rebound by Hawkins. Good pass to Shrimp. Double team on Dedlow. Here is Peyton again. He hits it, his second from downtown, and the score is 12 to 9 in favor of Seattle. Peyton loves that corner for the three-point shot. So far, Malone and Hornacek have accounted for all nine of the Jazz points. Here is Morris. This is the baseline. Hornacek fights his way in, blocked by Sean Kemp. Well, with Kemp and Johnson out there, you have two terrific shot blockers. And Trent getting open. So you're seeing Seattle with intimidating inside defense with the shot blockers. And Shrimp and Peyton getting free to hit the jumpers. Any time that you catch Seattle in transition, the one guy that you have to get to is Detlef Shrimp for the three-point shooting. The Sonics three for four in threes. Just take a look around. Darkness rules the earth. In a dangerous world. Governments crumble. Chaos reigns. In a treacherous time. There is opportunity in chaos. Evil is a fact. Drax is on a quest for a supernatural power. And courage. Stop them. You're the only one who can. Is a phantom. Who was that guy? Somebody I already killed. There are some who say he is only a myth. Soon they will discover the Phantom is real. Rated PG. At theaters everywhere, Friday, June 7th. Your pulse quickens. Your eyes lock in. You hear the snap of the ball, and all you can think is, I'm ready for the NFL on TNT. Get your first jolt of the football season with the NFL on TNT, coming August 8th. The basketball is right here with John Stockton. You're going to see Hornacek come up, set a back screen for Malone, then he's going to step to the top of the circle. Now, as Malone cuts down, he's going to the front of the rim, then he's going to seal his man on his back. 
Now keep an eye on this now. Here comes your back screen. Now once the screen is set, Hornacek pops up. Now he's looking right down in front, seal the man, put it up, but here comes the shot blocker. Goaltender. But on the next time down, it was Sean Kemp with the block. So there you see the three for four, as you pointed out, Hubie, Seattle from downtown. Utah has yet to hit, and uh, they were a good three-point shooting team uh, during the regular season, but have struggled here, and I guess when you look at shooting percentages, Seattle's defense has lowered them considerably. Well, during the course of the year, Seattle averaged 23 attempts a game, 20 three-point shots. That was fourth in the lead. Great pass, Malone, to Chris Morris driving the baseline, and it's 15 to 11, Seattle. Five minutes gone by here in the opening quarter, game three. Stockton trying to deny an overplay Peyton. And now Felton Spencer doubles Kemp, who hits from outside. Sonics are making their outside shots. That was a two-point basket. Now, you have to love that. Now, you can see they trapped Peyton, and no one wrote it to no one rotated to Sean Kemp at, at the uh, potential three. He stepped inside the line. The illegal defense called against the Seattle Sonics. That has been a bone of contention for teams that have had to face this defense throughout the playoff. Well, George, George is happy. I mean, his guys hustle. You never have to worry for lack of hustle with Seattle. They not only trap, everyone rotates. You cannot have a weak link when you trap as much as they do. Stockton single covered and a foul away from the ball. Irvin Johnson looking at uh, Hugh Hollins and has picked up his third personal foul. And now Sam Perkins will get off the bench for the Sonics and come in. Now this is a normal rotation for Seattle. This is going to be a baseline screen. Keep an eye on it right here. And you're going to see, now that's, that's unnecessary. Why, why grab a guard and swing him out of the way? The main thing is, is you're either coming over the top and denying or you're going to belly up on Carmelo on the baseline. You saw the impressive numbers by Sam Perkins, who continues to be a star off the bench in the playoffs. A tough matchup for every team he's played in the postseason. Good screen by Spencer on Morris, but he's not hitting in the rebound. Schrempf comes down, and Hornacek has fought for the offensive rebound and another foul called against the Sonics inside. Now Hornacek, that's his second offensive board. In this series, Jeff has been doing an excellent job in rebounding a lot of the mix, uh, missed shots, and he's getting down in there and he's putting his nose in, and that has to happen. Because when you launch the threes, the rebounds are coming out to the foul line on the misses. Hawkins with the personal foul, and Hornacek, who has four rebounds in all, you mentioned two off the offensive glass, is now 12 of 13 in the series at 94% in the playoffs from the line. Antoine Carr who played 30 minutes in game two replaces Felton Spencer and that's the most points that Carr played throughout the year. Well it's something that Jerry has got to go with. Antoine Carr is a scorer where Spencer and Osetag are basically rebounders so right now he's looking for a little shot in the arm with another score. That was most minutes of course 30 in game two and Peyton nearly knocked down hits another three so Gary Payton now has nine points on three from downtown and a seven point Sonic lead is their biggest of this first quarter they're, they're, catching, they're catching John Stockton trying to double team down inside and then they're screening him and that's opening Payton in the corner and Morris travels so Chris Morris struggling at the start of this game Scored eight points in game two and is averaging seven and a half, but he has yet to find the range. And the Sonics hitting from all cylinders, four for five from the three-point range. Right now, Utah's problem, you'd say, well, they're not scoring. Their biggest problem is they cannot stop these people at the other end. And getting knocked to the floor is Hornacek. And we'll have a foul. Sean Kemp has picked up his first personal foul. Yeah, Sean Kemp received the screen on the other side of the lane as he came across. Uh, Hornacek just stepped right in front of him. Utah so far going to Antoine Carr off the bench, and they do not have much experience other than Carr of their reserves, and that's hurt them. Malone with a great pass to Stockton. Touch pass inside, but Morris can't convert the layup. And a... Hugh Hollins is going to change his call. He pointed to the other direction. Yeah. And the foul will be right here against Seattle. See, now, once you had an advantage, 
You had a two-on-one situation. Stockton makes the kick out. Morris has got to finish. You cannot be just standing. You have to be moving to the basket. And Stockton made a perfect pass. Morris leaves it and doesn't finish. And you know, he'll be the Sonics already in the penalty with 5 for 14 remaining in the first quarter. And here is Morris, who is struggling at 1 for 5 from the field. Hits the free throw, however. And it's a six-point game. Chris Morris, seven years with the New Jersey Nets before signing with Utah as a free agent. We're here at the Delta Center in Salt Lake City, game three of the Western Conference Finals. Sonics lead two to nothing in games. Dick Stockton, Hubie Brown, and Reggie Theus, and one for two for Morris from the line. Payton to Perkins, air ball, lost out of bounds by Chris Morris, and he is playing this first quarter in a fog. Yeah, they're going to substitute for him right now. Brian Russell is coming into the game for Morris. It isn't like that position is not getting good looks. Morris has had all good looks at the basket. They need someone to finish. And Howard Isley takes his jacket off and comes in at point guard, replacing John Stockton. Stockton, of course, been an Iron Man, has various ailments, not making excuses, but may not play as many minutes tonight. Steal by Hornacek as he recovered on the pass off his foot. Ryan Russell with a big series against San Antonio puts up his first shot. So the uh, small forward position not getting it done scoring-wise thus far. Well, see, that was smart by Shrimp. What he said was, I, I'm not going to let you take me off the dribble. I'm going to force you to hit a jump shot. You just came in the game. Illegal defense called against the Jazz, and that is a savvy move by Deadwood Shrimp with all the experience he's had. One thing you never want to have happen is a guy just comes in a game and then you run at him and he takes you off the dribble and breaks the defense down. Sean Kemp out of balance looking for the foul and gets it. That'll be only the second team foul called against the Jazz in the first quarter and it's against Antoine Carr. Vincent Askew getting set to come into the game. Another one of the uh, great defensive specialists that George Carl can call on. Kemp Eight of 11 from the line in the series, makes the first, and Askew replaces Hersey Hawkins in the Sonic lineup. Hawkins scored two points. The interesting thing about Kemp's numbers in this series, he's averaging 18 points a game, and he is only taking nine shots a game. That is fantastic. Shooting 78% from the floor. But the crowd has been kept out of the game because the Sonics have opened up an eight-point lead. They have led throughout from the opening uh, moments down to 4.15 to go in the first quarter. Carr posting up against Kemp, and this is the hook shot. No one on the glass. See, no second shot attempts for Utah. Pass inside to Kemp. Good positioning for Kemp, but he never had control, and the Jazz wind up with it on the turnover. Yeah, Antoine Carr got popped right in the face, and that was an excellent strip by Malone of Kemp. He's not, he's not a shot blocker, Dick, but what he is is he strips people. Hornacek on a great bounce pass from Carl Malone, and Peyton coming right back with a runner, and get it out. Off the rim, and here come the Jazz. Yeah, get it out. Three, Three on two, two break, and here is Brian Russell with the layup. And the crowd has something to cheer about for the first time. Absolutely. That's, that's the first true fast break that we've seen where they've had a three-on-two with numbers. And then I like the way Russell finished. No doubt in his mind, he was taking it strong. Russell, big time against San Antonio, has been relatively quiet in this series. But as you pointed out, was a starter a couple of years ago and seeing a lot of time in postseason for Jerry Sloan. Well, second round draft pick out of Long Beach State. He started 48 games that first year. This year, he started 15, but then they gave most of the games to Morris or Benlock. Askew lost control of it. Out of bounds. Last touch by the Jazz as Mike Mathis overruled Jack Neves. And five seconds on the shot clock for the uh, Sonics. Now takes a and now a full timeout called by Seattle with 3.13 remaining in the opening quarter. If you're up early enough to the road to yourself, driving can actually be fun. 
My hot rod days are over, but I'm still more likely to pass than to be passed. Sometimes on the weekends, my husband and I just like to kind of take off and lose ourselves in the beautiful scenery. If he's driving, west. That way. You're I, I'm not. That's very easy. Now, with $600 cash back, Ford Contour is just $14,590. Or get incredible 2.9% APR financing. Hurry, this offer ends. I love the country. It makes me want to sing. I'd like to teach my friends to do the same thing. We may blue bell, or maybe just the old fashioned way. So that's why we say, have yourself a Bluebell Country Day. Somewhere beyond the sea, somewhere waiting hey, for your me. Your turn, man. When you've got the great taste of a nice cold Miller life, Life is good. I think she digs you. Really? No. Beyond the sea, some... This program is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the National Basketball Association. Any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the National Basketball Association is prohibited. We'd like to show you, the basketball is here, Seattle is rotating the ball. You're going to see Gary Payton take Stockton right into the screen. Now watch Stockton, we call this double spacing. He gets caught. As soon as Payton sees that, he reads the defense and he floats, and you're going to see a pass right here for a three. Keep an eye on it now. Read the defense. Anytime your man double spaces, then you just float, spot up, receive the pass, you're by yourself. That's his second three from that spot. Gary Payton has three of the four three-point baskets for the Sonics, who are four for six. That's 12 points to nothing on threes, as Utah 0 for three, and Chris Morris did all three attempts while he was in the game. Turnover. Sonics turn it over, and here's Hornacek. Ah, oh, beautiful. Jeff Hornacek with 10 points, off to his best start in this series by far. Uh, he's playing terrific, because not only is he scoring, he's setting great screens, and then he's also on the boards with his four rebounds. Inside, and a spectacular play by Gary Payton amongst the Giants inside. Payton now has 11. He leads the Sonics. Hornacek with 10 is the top scorer for the Jazz. It's 24 to 20 with 238 remaining in the first in favor of Seattle. They have led throughout this entire quarter. Hornacek double team was looking to shoot. Seven on the shot clock now for the Jazz. And a foul on the pass called on Detlef Shrimp, and that will be his first personal foul. Now keep an eye on Hornacek as he gets to the foul line. You'll say a little hesitation, the defense moved, and now he's taking it right to the hole. Nate McMillan has replaced Detlef Shrimp in the Seattle lineup. McMillan, who is the glue, according to George Carl defensively, can also hit from outside as he has done. In fact, he said McMillan and Perkins have been flawless off the bench for us in the playoffs. In this series, McMillan is not only averaging six points, he's giving them five rebounds and five assists in 28 minutes of play. That's what George means. Plus, he's one of their defensive stoppers. Hornacek with 12 points, four rebounds, and four for four from the line, keeping the Jazz in this game as they trail by two now with 2.20 to go. First quarter. Double team, now a triple on Kemp. And wide open, McMillan. And he misses a two. He was wide open, though. Yeah, but the main thing is, is that they double team and help out down inside and make Seattle the new guys, the bench guys, hit the threes. And Malone tries to get the shot up in a hurry. He can't. Malone now two of seven from the field. And five points under two minutes remaining in the first quarter and traveling called against Vincent Askew in the paint. Anytime that Vinny Askew catches the ball 
in the post area, he's taking you strong. If they catch him on the wing, he's taking you off the dribble. You know that. The main thing you must protect, do not get posted up by him deep in the paint. Sonics have turned it over six times in this first quarter. That's a lot for them, but they still lead by two. Here is Hornacek. And that was a three-point attempt. Would have given the Jazz their first lead. Here is Peyton spinning around, out of control. Quick pass, Askew inside. And Carr bangs bodies and will commit his second personal foul. Well, that was a, an excellent call. Askew had Carr on his back in the paint in front of the rim. You can't let that happen. You've got to get around on either the top side or front the guy. That's a gimme in the NBA. So Carr, the most experienced bench man that Jerry Sloan has, has picked up two fouls here. Vincent Askew misses the first free throw. And our first look tonight at Greg Ostertag, who was picked on the 28th uh, choice in last year's draft, a rookie from Kansas, scoreless with one rebound in last game. Well, they need him on the boards, and they need him to come alive offensively in the paint. Now, Vinny Askew, during his career, is a 74% foul shooter. But during the course of the playoffs, he has really been struggling. He's in that mid-50% area. I like the way you call him Vinny, like you know him well. The Vincent is what <laughs> those of us who don't know him well will call him. 119 to go, 25-22 to Sonics. Isley, who's been impressive and aggressive since coming in for John Stockton. And Hornacek in the backcourt. Oster tag and Russell. And the fall away by Malone hits. Carl Malone now with seven. And it's a one-point game. 20 on the shot clock and 56 in the quarter. What they're doing now with Russell playing Peyton, they're trying to take away the posting up. And he's saying, so, so I, have, <laughs> I, I, I can do a few other things. He has 13 points, three from downtown on five for eight shooting. And the Sonics by three. Malone, guarded by Perkins, throws the ball away. Askew picked it off. He wanted to get it to Isley. Askew working against Hornacek, throws the ball away himself. So back-to-back -back turnovers gives the ball back to the Jam. Now you're going to see this down inside. Now this is Carl's favorite move from that spot. He'll always step at you like he's going, but what he's going to do. Now here you can see Russell went underneath the screen, and Peyton is on fire on his perimeter game. John Stockton back in the game, and Russell goes out. So two point guards are in the game now with less than a half a minute. And moving Hornacek up front, the reason is they're looking for a perimeter potential three-point shot. 14 on the shot clock, about a two and a fraction second differential. Now you're going to have a high screen and roll, and then we'll see if anyone opens up. Stockton for three, front rim, rebound by Peyton. Plenty of time. Seattle still has a chance to get the shot off. Peyton's been red hot. Not this time, but the Sonics and George Carl will take the first quarter effort on the road. Unlike the Houston game three, they're in front after one by a score of 27 to 24. They knew we were coming, man. Do you read me? Tom Cruise, Mission Impossible. Rated PG-13. Now playing for theaters everywhere. Bex, the original import. Taste German beer at its finest. Bex, America's favorite German beer. Yeah. It's all good on the hard will remain in calm. My game is tight and the bomb like Sean. Simply on the mission when transition is the game. Steady on the game, it's the man who make it rain. Came on the scene, green at 19. Critics intervened, but I still made the dream. Now the whole world is mine to reinvent. Where my skills represent, like my name was Sean Kemp. Yeah, you better understand it. This is my planet. Only one pizza that makes my picky taste buds go ooh, ooh, ooh. It's Domino's Pizza, just the way Domino's does it. That crust with that pepperoni, those zesty herbs. I like the deep dish crust, the hand-tossed crust, any Domino's crust. Just crust, crust, crust. You've got to try your favorite toppings and tons of cheese on that Domino's crust. It's your turn. For hot and wild, call Domino's now. And in a few minutes, you'll know what I mean. 
something about my hat that makes me feel mellow. When I wear it, I just want to chill. Some teams think I should wear it, even when I play. Get real. Logo Athletic, authentic NBA licensed products. You can just pick up a Napa part and feel the quality. When you look at the price, it feels even better. Pick up your share of quality products at Napa's Red, White, and Blue sale. With Autolite resistor spark plugs only 69 cents after rebate. An Evercraft 25-piece toolkit just $15.99. And STP products free after bonus rebates. So come save some green at Napa's Red, White, and Blue sale. America running. to Salt Lake City, Game 3 of the Western Conference Finals between the Seattle Sonics and the Utah Jazz. After one quarter, the Sonics lead 27 to 24. They had a lead up to eight in that first quarter. Shooting percentage, Utah, which has been at 40% throughout the series at 39 right now, but they have more points inside, scoreless from three-point territory. And Frank Perkowski, who George Carl said played Carl Malone defensively as good as anyone in Game 2 in there now. Well, in five minutes, he had four fouls in the technical zone. Oh, yeah. hey. Depends how you look at the game, right? That's right. Askew has a shot blocked by Carl Malone. And we have a stoppage of play and a foul call as they were coming up court, and that will be on Askew, his first. Now, you can see they're looking for a flop by Russell, but Carl Malone recovers and gets the shot blocked. Jazz starting out with Carl Malone, Greg Ostertag, Chris Morris back in the game, and in the backcourt, it's Brian Russell and John Stockton. So really one pure guard in there, and that's Stockton. Going with a bigger team. Chris Morris still having problems from the field now. 0 for 4. Yeah, they're 0, he's 0 for 4, and they are 0 for 6 and 3. Perkins from outside. Morris finds Malone and overthrows him. And once again, Chris Morris, who has turned it over twice and really having a rough go of it in this first half. You never throw a same plane pass to a guy who has a defender running alongside of him and expect to hit him. And if he completed that, we'd get him a tryout in the NFL. He put a job, too. <laughs> right now, Utah only shooting 39%, Seattle 53. Hayden uh, is in there along with Askew, Burkowski, McMillan, and Perkins. So Sean Kemp is on the bench. And good defense by Utah as McMillan had to throw up a desperation shot as the buzzer sounded. The second unit definitely not in sync for Seattle. Peyton, the only starter out on the floor with this group. Leading scorers in the game for Utah, Hornacek, who's on the bench right now with 11, and Peyton, who is in the game, with 13. So you keep Ostertag high. Anytime you double team, you never have to guard Ostertag out high. So you can run all the rotations that you'd like. Off the turnover, Peyton's way short. And it came down to McMillan. Getting the loose ball, so important. Now that's his game. Perkins for three and hits. Perkins will beat you to low post and from downtown as he hits his first. Sam Perkins, seven of ten from downtown in this series. Well, during the course of the year, he averaged four a game, attempt four a game, shot 36%. So you know you've got to rotate to him and force him to dribble the ball. Oster tag over Perkins, short. And the rebound by Burkowski. It's 30 to 24. The Jazz had cut the deficit to one, but now a six-point lead again for Seattle. Burkowski by Peyton. Ten on the shot clock. Good pass. Askew to Perkins. Great pass by Vincent Askew. The entire bench is up for Seattle. See, that's unselfish play. Askew could have forced the shot instead. He makes the extra pass. They break the defense down. Sonics come out strong. They have run off seven in a row here in the second. Make no mistake. Spiff is here. Introducing more. More hip room. More comfort. More than Civic, Sentra, Escort, or Corolla. And oh yes, more headroom than ever. The all-new Elantra. More car. 
The Elantra was designed for your safety with standard dual airbags, side impact protection, and available four-channel anti-lock brakes. The all-new Elantra, more car. And right now, the Elantra is even more affordable with $750 cash back. I'm Mike Lennon, and I would like to personally thank all of you who have recently come to Auto Credit Incorporated to take advantage of our great moving sale. Due to your response, we have now brought in 400 additional vehicles that we had set aside for our new location. So now you can choose from over 800 cars, trucks, and vans before we move. But they all must go, so you name the down and you name the payment. Come see the deal maker today at Auto Credit Incorporated. All around the world, York Air Conditioning is called on to cool the biggest and most important buildings and tackle the toughest air conditioning challenges, including yours. So when the world gathers in Atlanta for the 96 Summer Olympic Games, York will be there, cooling in the heat of competition, providing the comfort of home. Call today for the York Olympic Special from CNS. 254-5178. 254-5178. On all the ball rotations with Seattle, you must get the Perkins early, and when you do, force them to dribble. This is one of the many threes that he'll shoot right in your face. Now, over here, he has the ball. He's going to pass it to right there to Gary Payton. The ball is going to come out to Vinny Askew, and watch him run without the ball right to the front of the rim for that layup. This is just a beautiful play. This is unselfish basketball, give and go. The middle opens up in your face. On the other side, Antoine Carr, who picked up two fouls, now back in the game, gets his first field goal to break a seven-point string. Of course, you mentioned Sam Perkins, the only member of the Sonics who have been to the NBA Finals. That was the Lakers in 91. Here is Peyton with a turnaround left-hander. Peyton now with 15 points, the game-high score. Uh, he's just on fire, and he knows that he can shoot over Isley and also over Stockton any time that he gets into the paint. Here's Brian Russell hitting from downtown. Russell, and that's the first basket from three-point land for the Utah Jazz tonight. Collapse around Perkins, leaving Brakowski open, and he can hit the three as he proved in the series against Sacramento. Missed there, and here come the Jazz. Down by five. Stockton with only one assist, no point so far in 12 minutes. Here is Benoit missing from outside. David Benoit, who started 63 games at small forward for the Jazz. If Utah just stands around and launches all these threes, they're going to go down big here. The main thing is we get back into your offense. Burkowski misses his second straight from behind the arc. Utah one of seven from downtown. You mentioned their pension from shooting threes, and there is Brian Russell. And that one was blocked out of bounds. Right now, let's check in with Reggie Theus. Well, in that timeout over the Jazz huddle, Jerry Sloan was saying, you guys are losing your composure. You're running around shooting threes like a chicken with his head cut off. Guys? <laughs> well, he's right on top of that. They're, they're totally out of whack. They're not running their offense. And they're not showing any game down in there. And that's what they have to do. They have to establish a low post game. And if they take away the low post game and they value, that's what the low post game is all about. Getting to the foul line, getting fouls on people, and forcing people out. There's the big differential, and it's been that way throughout the series, but bigger tonight with Peyton outscoring Stockton 15 to nothing, thanks to 6 of 11 from the field. Antoine Carr getting inside and drawing the personal foul. That was called against Burkowski. Coming into tonight's game, Gary Payton has been getting 16 shots a night, Stockton only nine because of all the trapping. Tonight, there has been a limited amount of trapping on Stockton. He just cannot get into the flow of the offense. Sean Kemp back in the lineup, so it'll be Kemp with Burkowski up front and a smaller lineup with Hawkins, Askew, and McMillan and an offensive foul called against the Seattle Sonics. Yeah, and Nate McMillan is trying to plead his case right now with Mike Matthews saying, look, he got in front of me. Stockton is very feisty about creating the push from the other players. Stockton penetrating out of bounds. 
knocked to the deck and a personal foul. They were lucky there, Dick. There was no player on the receiving end of that pass. Vincent, don't call me Vinny Askew, uh, not called for that foul. It's uh, Nate McMillan with his second personal. And a technical foul called against Nate McMillan. He started arguing on the previous play and then ensured the technical on this call. Yeah, well, you know, Askew did a good job by calling Nate back and telling him, listen, you know, come back, step back. You know, you, you've got to be out on the floor for us, especially in the second half. Believe it or not, this is Stockton's third attempt from the free throw line and this on a technical in this series as he connects and now the Jazz trail by two Seattle was up by eight in the first quarter and stretched it down to eight again in the second after Utah narrowed it to one and now John Stockton can bring the Jazz to within one and can tie it up on this free throw now during the first two foul shot attempts Percy Hawkins and Nate McMillan are giving you Hollins an earful, and he is telling both of them that is enough. 7.36 remaining in the first half. Stockton misses the free throw that could have tied the game. So now the Jazz have run off seven in a row. Zonix did, did that a few moments ago. Hawkins looking inside to Kemp. Felton Spencer defending him. And a legal defense call against the Jazz. Yeah, they catch John Stockton in the lane. That's a technical now. That's the second call. Anytime that the ball goes into the post, John Stockton will leave his man. It was on the other side of the floor. When the ball was rotated out, he just stayed in the painted area. Percy Hawkins. Four for four from the line in the series. And a lot of people are saying Percy Hawkins is not involved in this series. But, you know, for a guy who scores so many points during the course of the regular season, 15 a game, he's only getting six shot attempts. And then also they've gone to other rotations. And he's had to play the uh, off guard throughout the playoffs. So his offense has been curtailed because of that. And Brian Russell committing the foul on Hawkins. He had to play Mitch Richmond. And he had to deal a little bit with Clyde Drexler and then Jeff Hornacek in this series. Well, he's done a good job in games one and two on Hornacek, keeping him to a very low shooting percentage. And an offensive oh, foul as Russell goes down. Uh, Frank Bukowski picked him off perfectly as he was coming up on a down screen. Wow, he just laid him right out. Bukowski will do that. Now keep an eye on this. Now there's a down screen. You can see he just stepped out and caught him with a forearm. Flagrant foul. Flagrant foul. He catches him with that forearm and puts him down. So he'll be the Sonics realizing going on the road now, and they've decided to raise up the physical aspect a couple of notches uh, to beat the Jazz to the punch, perhaps, on the road. Yeah, but what has happened now in the last three minutes, they've lost their focus at the offensive end of the floor, and they're complicating it, compounding everything by fouling unnecessarily and getting themselves into problems because if one thing the Jazz can do, they can make foul shots. You're holding them in their three-point game and in their regular field goal shooting, so don't put them on the line. 12 for 15 on the line for the Jazz and the crowd anticipating the first lead of the game. We're tied at 35-35 with 7.05 remaining in the first half. David Benoit will inbound. And the crowd will erupt if the Jazz finally get their first lead of the game. Stockton behind the car. And here's Brian Russell with the jumper. It doesn't happen on that time down the court. Excellent ball movement. And that's going to be there. Two passes or three passes will open up for you. McMillan looking for Kemp inside. Spencer doing a good job of denying. Here is Askew driving to the hoop as only he does, but he kicks the ball out of bounds. It'll be Utah's ball. I'm surprised that they continue to go away from Sean Kemp because Utah is playing him from the rear. He's open, but they go away from him and shake him off too quick, Dick. That was the 11th Sonics turnover of this first half.
Introducing more agility. The tires bite into turns with an eagerness that begs for more. The all-new Elantra from Hyundai. More cop. Choose the Elantra wagon or sedan. Either way, you're traveling in more style. The warranty speaks volumes about the quality of the car. And the Elantra has a longer powertrain warranty than Neon or Saturn. More warranty, more car. The all-new Elantra. And right now, the Elantra is even more affordable with $750 cash back. We're hot and wow. Call Domino's now. There is only one pizza that makes my picky taste buds go ooh, ooh, ooh. It's Domino's Pizza. Just the way Domino's does it. That crust with that pepperoni, those zesty herbs. I like the deep dish crust, the hand-tossed crust, any Domino's crust. Just crust, crust, crust. You've got to try your favorite toppings and tons of cheese on that Domino's crust. It's your turn. For hot and wild, call Domino's now. And in a few minutes, you'll know what I mean. Growing up, I was probably the biggest kid in my neighborhood. No, I was definitely the biggest. I don't remember exactly when I figured out it would be pretty easy to get my way. I think it was in seventh grade. It's our ball. It's our ball. But I decided then that I wasn't going to use my size. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Next one's off. I wanted to use my head, and I still do. Welcome back to the Delta Center in Salt Lake City, along with Hubie Brown and Reggie Theus. This is Dick Stockton. Game three, the Sonics looking to win on the road, as they did in Houston in game three, when they ultimately knocked out the two-time defending champions in four straight to get to the Western Conference Finals. You're looking at the technical foul. Askew committed the tee, and Stockton will go to the line. And he can give Utah their lead for the first time tonight. Biggest lead the Sonics have had, eight points. And once again, John Stockton misses the free throw. He is two for four at the line, with, unlike John Stockton. Well, he's very upset with himself. We're talking about an 83% shooter. He's always between 83 and 88 throughout his entire career. Now, Sean Kemp, this, this is a big thing. He only has two field goal attempts. They're not even looking at him. They're, they're not having patience. Offensive foul. And that's Felton Spencer inside, and that will be Spencer's first foul. That's amazing that the Sonics have the lead, and Kemp has not been part of what they're doing. That's right. And so you know you're in good shape in the second half. Big thing here tonight, stop headhunting on the screens. Screen an area, stop, and let the guy come off the screen, decide which way he's going to come. And they call Kemp for the offensive foul, and a good call by Hugh Hollins as he bumps Spencer inside and picks up his second personal. Well, I think he's controlling himself pretty good. See, he's leaning back. You sense you're allowed to put the forearm in the, in the lower back. You can see he's backing into him. Deadlift Shrimp has returned to the game. So right now, it's a big lineup of uh, Burkowski, Shrimp, Peyton, along with McMillan, and Hersey Hawkins. Peyton is on the bench right now. Six on the shot clock, double team on Malone. Russell driving in, and Kemp made him change his shot. That was excellent team defense. Great play by Carl Malone. Out of bounds. Last touch by the Sonic. A good call by Mike Matthews, and also Jackie Neese was right on top of that. Jeff Hornacek also back in the game for the Jazz, so they have a Hornacek, Stockton, Russell, Carr, and Malone. Sonics have turned it over 13 times. Utah, six. And we're still tied at 35. There's the turnover story. And yet the Sonics knocked them behind. Oh, beautiful. Stockton misses the layup. That was beautiful. He had two 6'10 guys on the screen in a row, and he went the opposite way. Opened right up. Kemp from McMillan. The basket counts and a foul. And once again, and the pass the inside game. working for the Sonics. And Kemp will go to the line to complete a three-point play. It's just interesting in the NBA. When you miss a layup at one end, how quickly the team will take it down the other end and score. It's just a matter of seconds. Now, this is just beautiful. They catch the defender behind Kemp in front of the basket. It's, it's all over. Are they not getting back? Now, you can see right here the nine catches, the double teams in the paint. But right now, to me, George Carl always says, in transition, Sean Kemp is our first option every single time. I just think they're looking him off, though. Is Utah not getting back? Well, 
you, you got to say, though, you got to give Kemp his due. I mean, Kemp is out, out, out running the guys that are matched up with him, but then they also release guys. Malone with a fake on Burkowski. No resistance for Burkowski, who played Malone exceptionally well in the last game, got beaten there, and the Sonics' lead is won, 38-37. Nearly five minutes remaining in this first half. Seattle led by three after one. Bedlam Shrimp posting up inside against Brian Russell. Give Burkowski the three, he'll take it. He's 0 for 3 from downtown. Great defensive play by Russell. They have four on three here. Well, once again, Malone and Burkowski isolated down low. Pull away by the mailman, and Kemp goes high for his fourth rebound. Look out here now. Four and a half to play, 17 on the shot clock for Seattle. One point lead, oh, good great. spin move inside on the baseline, and Kemp is pushed. One thing you know about Kemp, every time that he catches the ball on that left side of the floor, you must protect against that baseline screen. Now here you have Carl, there's a head fake, good, solid basketball, get the defender to leave his feet, and then take him strong. Belton Spencer on the personal foul. That is his second alone tonight. Nine points. The lead is one for the Sonics. See, they can do this all night because uh, Russell is giving Shrimp four inches. Illegal defense call against the Jazz. And the Sonics will go to the line once again. They continue to catch the player playing Perkins at the top. Now, that's Spencer. If you post up Deadlift Shrimp to the left of the lane, what is happening, Spencer is trying to get down in there for the double team. Hawkins hits the first. So you're going to see, they, they can get this all night long. Once that ball goes down inside the deadlift shrimp, got past the basketball. Once the ball goes down in there, you see, they have a height advantage. They're sending. Now, as Perkins goes high, see, they're just hanging around. Off the screen, Hersey Hawkins. Nice pass. With a pass through Perkins. Trying to stuff it through. And they're going to call offensive interference over the cylinder with Sean Kemp. So Utah, again with the ball. George Carl uh, can't understand that call, but it was the right one. Yeah, now this is, uh, Perkins, he miraculously gets this off. Now right there, not only on top of the thing he grabbed onto the rim, could have got a technical. 39-37, Seattle leading Utah. And driving in with a layup is Jeff Hornacek, who is 5 of 7 for the field after shooting 39%. And Brian Russell is all over the floor here defensively. Uh, Any time that there is any form of transition, he's hustling and scrapping, keeping things alive. And another stoppage of play. Hornacek shooting a lot better tonight than he has in the previous two games. Well, he's going strong. Here's a hook. Could have caught him on the offense. Hawkins with a little bit of an Academy Award, but Jeff definitely hooked them and moved them back. Hornacek scored 22 points in the last game has struggled from uh, three-point territory, as you pointed out uh, earlier in the broadcast. But tonight, Hornacek has 14 points. The only three-point basket for the Jazz comes from Brian Russell. The strength of the Utah Jazz, Malone, Hornacek, and Stockton, all three shoot over 50%. In this series, we know that Malone is shooting right at 47, but Hornacek and Stockton at only 39. That's why we said at the top they must come in and shoot over 50% if they're going to have a shot tonight. Stoppage of play was to reset the clock. Deadlift Shrimp with a turnaround. Shrimp now with seven points. Back to Antoine Carr is the only member of the first seven of the Jazz shooting over 50% in the series. So they're all down. Peyton cuts off Stockton. Stockton misses the shot. Malone followed this inside. Felton Spencer draws the foul finally for the Jazz. See, one of the centers, whether it's Spencer, Carr, or Osete, they've got to, they've got to be a major presence here on the offensive glass because of all the double teaming. Three on Kemp, Yubi. Yeah, this is that. They're going to come with Nate McMillan. They're not going to fall asleep tonight and have him pick up his fourth. And you remember in the last game, 
Kemp came back with five personal fouls and ended up making the big plays, the two baskets and the steal to uh, give the uh, Sonics their win. But Kemp goes to the bench having scored seven points and has three personal fouls. Belton Spencer missing the first free throw and misses them both. They're getting to the line, but they're not converting lately. And the lead is two for the Sonics, 3-10 to go in the first half. Perkins with a fake. Shot inside the arc, wild shot by Sam Perkins. Here's Brian Russell. That's one of the few times in the series that he had to move. Spencer, no one picked him up. Belton Spencer ties the game at 41. The Jazz have not had the lead four times. They have had the opportunity to take the lead in this half and have failed to do so. Screen and roll. Nate McMillan, who replaced Kemp. Down low to Perkins. Throws it away over Peyton's head. Good double team that time with Stockton taking away the passing lane. And then also Spencer getting his hands up in there and deflecting that pass. That's the 15th turnover. And that was Spencer's hoop. The NBA Playoffs on TNT are brought to you by Beachwood Aged Budweiser, official sponsor of the 1996 U.S. Olympic team. This Bud's for you. And by Hyundai. See the all-new Elantra today. It's more car. Experience the excitement of your favorite Olympic events. Now in commemorative cans of Bud, Bud Light, and Bud Ice. Better yet, if you get one of these special gold cans, you can see the games live in Atlanta. Look for Grab the Gold details wherever you see Bud Family Olympic packages. Just another part of the Bud World Party. Introducing more. More hip room. More comfort. More than Civic, Sentra, Escort, or Corolla. And oh yes, more headroom than ever. The all-new Elantra. More car. The Elantra was designed for your safety with standard dual airbags, side impact protection, and available four-channel anti-lock brakes. The all-new Elantra, more car. And right now, the Elantra is even more affordable with $750 cash back. Is this your idea of better TV? How about this? Or better yet, this. <laughs> if you ask me, it's not the TV, but what's on it, like Direct TV. 61 movie channels, 28 music channels, 14 news and information channels, and 12 family channels. All together, only on Direct TV. So you can really channel your family's interests. For the Direct TV retailer nearest you, call 1-800-DIRECT-TV. This is the third time the Sonics and the Jazz have been matched up in the playoffs. Back in 1992 in the Western Conference semifinals, the Jazz won in five games. This was game five, 111 to 100. Carl Malone led the Jazz with 37 points and 13 rebounds as the Jazz went on to win four games to one. And now Utah has the ball and a chance to take the lead, but Brian Russell off the bench has been tremendous tonight for Utah. Well, he's done an excellent job. He has seven points, four rebounds, two assists, one steal, and he has at least three deflections. Adam Keith making his first appearance into the game for the Utah Jazz. Sonic shooting 47%, the Jazz 36, so the shooting for the Jazz have gone, dropped from 39%, and yet they have a chance to take their first lead. They've had four tries previously to move in front. Under two and a half to play in the first half. Kickball and a new 24-second clock for Gary Payton. Reggie Theus. Coach George Paul in a timeout was saying that you guys got to stay focused and there's, you're seeing more double teams than you've seen in the entire playoffs, so you have to keep moving the ball around. Sage advice from Carl Malone. Now this, is a, Carl, Carl. Right. <laughs> this is a very small lineup out here now. They're playing Keith as a uh, Hornacek. All right, Hornacek hits the three. That's the second time they've moved Hornacek to that spot. And the Jazz lead for the first time tonight. 44 to 41, 17 for Jeff Hornacek. He has been the big scorer in the game. Under two minutes to go in the first half, and now they call the offensive foul. They're catching Shrimp on the screen, getting his leg out. 
Now here you're going to have Intercar. This is what we call a split. They switch. Seattle switch, but they were late getting out on Hornacek. The foul was called against Detlef Schrempf, his second. So with under two minutes to go, the Jazz have their lead and the ball. Picking up on the switch was Perkins. McMillan was on below. Nice. Ryan Russell nails it from the baseline, and there's a foul. Loose ball foul has been called against Adam Keith, but the basket by Russell counts to give the Jazz a five-point lead. Now they take it out on the side. That time, as soon as Malone was double-teamed, they came off that screen and roll, they trapped Stockton, they get it right to Malone, and then Malone makes a perfect diagonal pass. Just watch this now. They take it, here's the rotation, they go over and they make the extra pass. Beautiful. Nice move by Brian Russell. And he's got nine points. Oh, he's got a terrific energizer off the bench. 13 on the shot clock. Hersey Hawkins wins his way in. Great move by Hawkins. Fossey. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Spell that. Does he spell that out? We've been... <laughs> Talking about Vinny Askew to tell you the truth. Percy Hawkins, who is guarding Hornacek, doing a good job of it now. Is that split again, and they switch. Malone, and Hawkins gets the rebound. Up to Nate McMillan. Sonics pushing it up. They want to play their up tempo style. Perkins missed the three, and a loose ball foul against Watch out, Jack. George Carl. Watch out now. George is running down that sideline, challenging Mike Mathis. And three fouls against Detlef Shrimp. So Kemp and Shrimp, the starting forwards, each with three personal fouls. Yeah, right now, the one thing you do not want to do is you do not want to pick up a couple of tees here in, in the last minute of play. You've given up enough in this first step as well as throwing the ball away with your turnovers. So with the with the technical fouls and the turnovers, you know, you're still sitting, you're only down three points. Shrimp going out, having scored seven. Kemp on the bench with three, also with seven points. And Adam Keefe on the line. Again, coming up on the Reebok Halftime Report, Ernie, Cheryl, and Danny Ainge will be joined by Patrick Ewing of the Knicks. He'll preview tomorrow's game three from Orlando between the Bulls and the Magic. During the course of the year, Keith had a great year. He was right at seven points a game and six rebounds. Had a terrific year for them. The Jazz have missed their last five free throws. So their lead is three with under a minute to go. Sonics with the ball and 17 on the shot clock. Now this they have. Posting up a Peyton on Stockton. They know they can get that. And Peyton can shoot over the top. There's Peyton shooting over the top and hitting over the top. The coach. Well, I don't understand why they went away from it because it's, it was good all throughout game two. 17 for Peyton. Hornacek has 17 for the Jazz. Brian Russell with a good fake on Hawkins with a great basket and a foul. Brian Russell is keeping Utah in this game with 11 off the bench. Now, Dick. That was a hard shot. Now, he saw the... Uh, he said, I am going to take this one right to the hall. We were in a perfect line with this. Now, as he goes up here right now, he takes the shot. Askew with the personal foul, his second. And here is Brian Russell, who hits the free throw after the Jazz had missed five in a row. And Utah leading 49-45. to 45, And a timeout called. 22nd timeout by the uh, Seattle Sonics. Well, we were looking for someone from Utah to step up and help Carl Malone and Hornacek from a scoring position. We said Stockton cannot do it in this series because he's not getting enough shot attempts because they're continually trapping him 35 to 40 times, getting the ball out of his hand. But tonight, Brian Russell off the bench is the main guy in this half. Let's see what happens in the second half. And let's see the contrast, the Jekyll Hyde performances of the Jazz, 6-0 and at home, 1-6 and on the road, and look at the disparaging numbers there. Well, the points, 19 points better at home, but then again, this is game one against the team that you have played six times this year, and you've lost five. If the guys in green just take care of the basketball in the second half, cut back their turnovers, they're going to be in very good shape here. The Sonics don't look like they're shaking at all by playing in Jerry Sloan's barn, the Delta Center. This is a team, remember, 4-0 on the road in the 
playoffs. Well, during the course of the year, 26 and 15 on the road. One of the best road records in the NBA. One of the best three, you're right. There is Peyton working against Stockton. As you say, it's been there throughout, but he loses the ball in the Hornacek. Filling the lane is Carl Malone. Here's Malone. He gets the layup. Look out. Point Look out. out. And Peyton lays it in. And the basket counts as time runs out. And Gary Peyton released and caught the Jazz napping. Hornacek has 17, but this crowd stunned over Peyton's hoop. Jazz lead, however, 51 to 47 at the half. How does a mild-mannered single mother get from here to here? Find out on June 28th. Strip teams, rated R. At theaters, June 28th. The impossible is now possible. From the makers of Krylon comes the next revolution in painting. Latex enamel in a spray. A vivid array of color. The ease of a spray with low odor and easy cleanup. The beautiful, long-lasting finish of enamel. Introducing new Krylon Living Color. Latex enamel in a spray. The next revolution in painting. The original import. Taste German beer at its finest. Bex, America's favorite German beer. Sometimes there's a game on my corner, and I'm deep into my head, so it goes all like zen-like. And check this out. I'm seeing Anderson, Robinson, Van Exel, and my man Sam Cassell playing ball when my guys play ball. And it's all about ball. And it's crazy, right? I mean, all in my head, but you think I'm crazy, right? Yo, I'm not crazy. I know what's real. I'm real. This is my planet. The Reebok Halftime Report is brought to you by Reebok. Are you prepared to say, this is my planet? I tell you what, if Brian Russell keeps playing like this, folks around the league will stop calling him Byron Russell. He's got 12 off the bench. Utah's got a 51-47 lead over the Seattle Supersonics, who have a two games to none lead in the Western Conference Final. Ernie Johnson and Cheryl Miller and Danny Ainge and the Knicks' Patrick Ewing all in Atlanta with the Reebok Halftime Report. Utah's task tonight is the same as that of the Orlando Magic in the Eastern Finals. That is, get back to your place and get back in the series. Orlando got blown out in Game 1 in Chicago by 38, then blew an 18-point lead in Game 2, begging the question, how's Orlando doing emotionally heading into Game 3? The mentality is still good right now. I mean, we know we have a lot of fresh owners right now to, uh, to win game three. And, uh, you know, we just have to go out there and play hard. You know, leave everything out there on the floor and not, and not take anything back with us. We have to do the same thing that the Bulls have done. We have to come in here tomorrow and try and get game three. Uh, if we win that one, then I think a little bit of pressure goes back on the Bulls to try and get out of Orlando with a win. If you really look at it for his word, it was, Chicago was supposed to win at home. That's why they only lost one game all season long. And, and we always play well at home, so I think we're supposed to win these two at home. As long as we go out there and just play like we did the first half of game two, I think we'll be okay. Certainly, Chicago's done what they had to do, win two at home. A guy like Dennis Scott and Nick Anderson have not done what they're supposed to do. Those guys are combined seven out of 30 from the field. What gives with the perimeter game? I think it's Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan's defense. I think they ran into an early in game two that second half. I don't, I've never seen a defensive performance like that in the second half. They were shell-shocked. They were nervous. They didn't, nobody wanted to handle the ball. They couldn't even get into the offense to get the ball down into Shaq, who was killing them in the first half. Great defense by Chicago. It's not that Nick and Dennis are as bad as that Chicago is great. <laughs> yeah, you bring up Shaquille right. O'Neal, and uh, <laughs> how would you grade Chicago, the job they're doing on the big guy? Well, I think they're doing an outstanding job. You know, they're putting a lot of fresh bodies on them. They're banging and bumping and making them work for everything. And like you said, like Danny said, the, uh, the, their defense is making it hard on him because the other guys can't, can't get him the ball inside. At the same time on the Orlando side, you lose Horace Grant, Patrick. And now John Conkak's got a bad knee. He is questionable for tomorrow. Where do you go if you're Orlando, and what kind of a matchup problems is this creating well, for you? It's going to create some problems, but, you know, whoever they, they, they play, they're going to have to step up. The rest of the guys are uh, going to have to also step up. Nick, um, Dennis, everybody. 
the whole the whole team gonna have is the, they're gonna have to step up and get the job done. Mm -hmm. Mentally, after you blow an 18 point lead, there's the chance to steal one on the other guy's court, Cheryl. Are you just talking a good game when you say, yeah, let's just, you know, we're ready to go, we're going to play two good something. halves? Watching game two reminded me of one of those old martial arts films where you see the guy <laughs> just snap his, ch his heart right out of his chest. But it, it was actually, it was very uh, hard to watch that game. But I think that they're going to try to erase and forget about game two. They're at home, D. Scott and Nick Anderson have to get it going offensively and get the ball into, in, into Shaquille's hands. The old martial arts film. Game three is tomorrow <laughs> on NBC. When we come back, What's the Chicago approach on a trip to Disney World? You're going to hear from his airness on the eve of Game 3. Keep it here. We'll be back. You can just pick up a Napa part and feel the quality. When you look at the price, it feels even better. Pick up your share of quality products at Napa's Red, White, and Blue sale. With Napa motor oil, only 89 cents a quart. Contoured style bug shields for a low $29.99. And a combo pack of no-touch tire and wheel cleaners, just $2.99 after rebate. So come save some green at Napa's Red, White, and Blue sale. We keep America running. Now, what's going on? Hi, I'm Tai Miao. The market is not always going to get the most recent news. The future just keeps coming at you. I think about kids today, those video games they play. Every year, a new generation, more advanced. Well, this is the next generation of power. Renewal from Railvac. They're alkaline, like regular batteries, but more advanced. You can renew them, reuse them, instead of just throwing them out. They don't just come back. They come back strong. Play it smart. Railvac Renewal. Goodyear revolutionized wet traction design with AquaTread. Now, Goodyear introduces InfiniTread, the first tire with a lifetime tread life warranty. The new all-season InfiniTread. Its tread is guaranteed for as long as you own your car. Call 1-800-GOODYEAR. When I get a headache, I just want it gone. But now with Tylenol. On tough pain, two Advil work better than any two Tylenol. Nothing is proven to work better or last longer than Advil. Nothing. Advanced medicine for pain. After 24 minutes, it's a four-point game. 51-47, Utah with the lead over Seattle as the Reebok halftime report rolls on. Patrick Ewing's Knicks are the only team to beat the Chicago Bulls in the postseason. That was game three of the Eastern Semis at the Garden. Now Michael Jordan and his buddies hit the road for just the fourth time in the playoffs. A trip to the Arena, where the Bulls were one of just four visiting teams to win this season. And if they follow Michael's lead, they will go in with confidence. I think people have always known me to, to be more excited playing on the road uh, in, in difficult situations. Sure, it's great to be at home, and the fans have really supported us, but I think, you know, we know in the playoffs, you got to win on the road. That's when the things are all stacked against you, but we're going down to a place that a team hadn't really lost that many games there. You know, it's what, 76 and 6? So, uh, we know it's a tough task, but I think that's the beauty of it all, and, you know, hopefully everyone has the same mentality that I have about trying to succeed on the road and succeed in general. Patrick, I know you'd rather be uh, preparing for Game 3 of a, an Eastern Conference Final Series than sitting here tonight. But, oh, definitely. Uh, what is it about that Chicago team, and do you see it in their eyes when, uh, when you're up against them? Oh, you know, um, definitely. You know, you may, you mainly you see it in Michael's eyes. I mean, he, he's the leader on the team, and everybody else follows. And, you know, he has that intensity and the look, and he's just ready to rock and roll. I think, you know, Dennis Rodman, I think, has been ready to rock and roll and score, surprisingly. <laughs> <laughs> Double-digit average in this in this series. How surprising is this, or is this just an, a hidden talent that the worm is uh, displaying? Well, I keep reading in Chicago, you know, that Dennis is this great offensive player. Dennis is a smart basketball player, and he knows. But right now, they're not. He's not even being guarded. Shaq comes over to try to block shots, and there's Dennis wide open to get the offensive rebound. Uh, if Shaq doesn't get the block, Dennis gets the easy tip. And Shaq, when he catches the ball in the post. Dennis against Shaq. Shaq backs off under the paint, gives him eight foot shots. Dennis has been making them though. How about the situation with Tony Kukoc as one three point shooter to another? Here's a guy who's one for 29 and has missed 24 in a row from out there. <laughs> Not that you can relate to that at all, Danny. <laughs> but when do you stop shooting? 
Oh, you don't stop shooting. That line is not there for decoration. You use it, and you don't just quit shooting until the coach takes you out. The coach oh, you will tell you to quit shooting. Step in a little bit. Get no, your, no, no, find no. your range a little bit, then start stroking the jump. No, come Tony on, needs man. to go to the hole a little bit. But come on, he had 10 assists in the, in no, the last game he played, and he's playing you well. Take, you can't take away what he's done, but I'm just saying until he starts knocking down from the from the three-point arc, you got to step in, knock down a little bit. Yeah, no, just keep shooting. Shooter, you got to keep, keep shooting. shooting him, and yeah. when he might make 10 in a row. Got to um, keep shooting it. Dennis or Rodman can get out there and start knocking down. Three. <laughs> That's what's going to happen in game three. Who would have thought the, the Reebok halftime report would turn into Tony Ku coach then and now? <laughs> but back to wrap things up in just a minute. Seattle trailing Utah 51 47. Utah trying to get back in this thing. Down two games to none. There's a mailman going to work. How to achieve success? For me, it's the details in golf. That means taking it one stroke at a time. And at Jiffy Lube, we do it one car at a time. And we offer the quality of Pennzoil. So even though we've serviced almost 100 million cars, the one that matters most is the one we're working on now. If it doesn't say Jiffy Lube, it just isn't Jiffy Lube. Original import. Taste German beer at its finest. Bex, America's favorite German beer. No matter what kind of call your business makes, AT&T stands behind it. This is the most powerful communications network in the world. And if your call ever runs into trouble, the network sends you around it. Or if a cable gets cut, it won't affect you. No other network handles so much business, and no other network guarantees all of it. Only AT&T stands behind every kind of call your business makes. Where does your phone company stand? AT&T, for the life of your business. At AutoZone, most of our customers are folks who like to work on their cars themselves. But the ones who come in most often are those who work on cars for a living. Guys like Ed Graven. Now, Ed's garage is in Ogden, Utah, where most of the time you'll find him pulling an engine or sliding under a car. And just about every day, he drives past a half dozen other parts stores on his way to AutoZone. Because Ed knows that when it comes to getting the right part for the right price, there's just no place better than AutoZone. Goodyear revolutionized wet traction design with AquaTread. Now, Goodyear introduces InfiniTread, the first tire with a lifetime tread life warranty. The new all-season InfiniTread. Its tread is guaranteed for as long as you own your car. Call 1-800-GOODYEAR. What if I told you everything you know about TV is about to change? Because now, there's Direct TV, totally digital television. More movies, more sports, more of what I want than ever before. All through a tiny satellite dish about the size of a small pen. Stay. How does DirecTV work? I have no idea. But it does. For the DirecTV retailer nearest you, call 1-800-DIRECT-TV. I don't know about you, but one of the most memorable moments of Game 2 in the Orlando-Chicago series came with about 10 seconds to go. Danny Ainge and Vern Lundquist at the mic. Give a listen. I was talking to Nancy Lieberman before the game tonight, Vern, and uh, I think she's the best woman basketball player of all time. Now, you're stirring up a hornet's nest. You know that. Uh, I'm just trying to get ruffle Cheryl's feathers back in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> There's no question. I did forget to mention Cheryl. Swoop that in. <laughs> she, might be, she might be the best basketball player of all time. Nancy Lieberman and Cheryl Swoop. Anyway, have you have you met anybody today? <laughs> I saw tree. I saw tree in Orlando and Chicago, and uh, Horace told me he was going to sick tree on me. Ladies and gentlemen, that has been the Reebok halftime report. You've been busted. Thanks a lot, Patrick Ewing, for being here, Danny, Cheryl. Remember, inside the NBA later tonight, gang. We'll see you. The Reebok halftime report has been brought to you by Reebok. Are you prepared to say this is my planet? You and I have a lot in common. We're a lot alike. We're the same, you and me. I look at you, I see myself. Pay too much for auto supplies and you'll feel like one too. Pep Boys has great prices. Class 1 trailer hitches from $29.99 or clamshell top carriers, $79.99 each. Installation available. 26,000 items at the guaranteed low price. Tires and service too. Pep Boys. Everything but gas. The critics are blown away. It's 
A one-of-a-kind experience. Like Jaws and Jurassic Park. Truly amazing. You guys should get out of there! Run! It's going to drop right on us! You have never seen anything like it before. Mike, jump to the grandma, hold up! Twister. Rated PG-13. Guess who has the largest selection of used vehicles in town, each with a quality control warranty? Guess who still sells any car in inventory for only $59 down? And guess who has new, convenient, phone ahead credit approval, where you can call before you come in and have your credit approved within one hour. There's only one dealership in Kansas City who's willing to do all this for you. Why, of course, it's Neal's Finance Plaza. Don't wait another day. Come down and see me. I'm right across the street from the Bendix plant. Call 941-8676 now. I'm Ernie Tamilia, your Independence Lincoln Mercury dealer. It's spring clearance, and the Mercury Challenge is on. Independence Lincoln Mercury is offering huge savings on Sable and 2.9% financing for 48 months. And 2.9% financing for 48 months on 96 Mystiques. 750 rebate on new Grand Marquis, $1,000 on Cougars, and $1,250 on Villager. Independence Lincoln Mercury has just received the North American Customer Excellence Award, and I'll see you on the showroom floor. Welcome back to the Delta Center, where the Sonics and Jazz game three of the Western Finals. Seattle leading two games to none. And at halftime, the Jazz lead the Sonics by a score of 51-47. to 47. Right now, let's send it over to Reggie Theus. All right, Coach, you're down four points. Could you just assess the first half for me? Elated. Uh, 16 turnovers, give up 21 free throws, down four. I thought we played a great first quarter, bad second quarter from a standpoint of our standpoint. Uh, we can play much better defense. There's a lot of good stuff out there. Horner checks having a great night. I think we'll tighten it down on him a little bit. And hopefully we'll get to the fourth quarter game, see what happens. All right, Coach. Good luck in the second half. And he's right. I mean, look at what's happened. I mean, Kemp and Shrimp are in foul trouble. Uh, Kemp has seven points. Things are not going their way in so many areas, and yet in the game. Huh? No, the defense has been solid. You say 17 turnovers. Add four technicals. Your bench is only two for 12. And you're only four down. Hey, you're, you're, you're in excellent shape. It's like the third game in the Houston series. When they were in the hundred, they made the most of it. Sonic shooting 50%. The Jazz at 41, even though they're getting more opportunities. Yeah, and that's all coming off the turnovers. But then the foul line. The Jazz missed eight foul shots in that first half. That's major. And the matchup uh, that we have been uh, charting, Gary Payton and John Stockton. Payton with a sensational first half. What else is new about Gary Payton in this series? But Stockton struggling. Yes, he is. And you can see with only the three field goal attempts, the fact that he is not getting any looks, not even in transition. The big guy, Sean Kemp, three personal fouls. That's a big one. And Carl Malone. Yeah, Carl Malone is having a tough night shooting. He's only five for 14 from the field. He's just got to take his time and get within the flow here. He forced too many in that first half. So Peyton, along with Hawkins, up front, Shrimp. Kemp and Irvin Johnson, and Kemp from the baseline, and it's tipped in by Irvin Johnson. Johnson also has three personal fouls, now with four points, and it's a two-point Utah lead. I tell you, this young fella is, is really a presence because he's a shot blocker. He makes himself available on the offensive glass. You must pay attention to him. Three-second violation. It was seven years ago that Irvin Johnson out of the University of New Orleans was uh, packing groceries at a supermarket in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Has he come from? Well, he's never, never played high school basketball. So you can see we have all, all types of guys in the NBA. you got to give him a tremendous amount of credit. And also the coaching staff at New Orleans during that period of time did an excellent job with him. They got to the NCAA tournament at the Hoosier Dome one year. Here's Kemp again, working against Felton Spencer, or this is Irvin Johnson. And Shrimp for three, nails it. Oh, Deadlift Shrimp, his second from downtown. <laughs> Are they on fire? They're six for 15 in this game, and it's always there for them. And we tell you, everybody keeps talking. Perkins in the threes, Peyton in the threes. Oh, that was beautiful. Stockton inside, but you're right about the Sonics from three-point territory. They regained the lead momentarily, but now the Jazz are up again by one. Well, that's their famous shuffle cut by Stockton. You must pay attention because they'll deliver the pass. That was his first basket of the game, surprisingly. 
Here is Shrimp working against Chris Morris. Shrimp with a fall away. High arcing shot, and Shrimp can do no wrong from the field. He has 12 points and five of the uh, Sonics points here to start the third quarter. It's such an advantage when your small forward can post up and then even draw the double teams. Malone finds Hornacek and Hornacek in and out. Last touch by the Sonics, so it is still Utah ball and Hornacek wondering why that didn't go through. Now just watch, now this is a, a spin move. He sees the double team coming, spins to the baseline, shoots it in your face. Brian Russell has come in the game replacing Chris Morris, so Jerry Sloan's going with the hot hand off the bench at the small forward position. Oh, beautiful. Hey, that was a nice save that time on that loose ball by Hornacek. Two minutes gone by. Here is Hornacek. A three for Hornacek, his second from downtown. And Jeff Hornacek has 20 points already in the game. Hawkins and Shrimp became confused. Who had him? Shrimp ran at him too late. Peyton working against Stockton. Staying with him, and the screen by Kent and Gary Payton now with 21 points. So a duel between Hornacek, the shooting guard on Utah, and the point guard on the Sonics, Payton. Every time they run that screen and roll, Stockton goes underneath, and they catch him. Tipped by Payton, but it comes out to Stockton wide open. And Malone, the Jazz are rushing their shots tonight. Well, the angle, that's a very bad angle to try to switch the shot. You're better off playing the rebound. Irvin Johnson on the other end gets a basket after the Jazz had four chances at their end. Yeah, you know, anytime that you get that weird angle there, that's a hard shot. You're like three to six feet away, and you try to swish it, bank the shot. Sonics by two inside, and a great conversion by... 13 points. We're tied at 58. Shrimp now working against Russell. An illegal defense against the Jazz. It's John Stockton who uh, was the guilty party and another technical foul. Well, once you make a commitment to go down on a man with the basketball in the post, you must trap him. John went three quarters of the way, faked it, and came back. His man was above the three-point line, so that is a zone call. Excellent interpretation that time by the referees. Percy Hawkins converts. That was the third technical on the Jazz for illegal defense violations. So the Sonics lead by one, and Peyton will inbound. Peyton with 21 points. Has Kemp down low. Not much from Kemp tonight. Knocked away. Malone might have knocked it out of his hands. He lost the control. Hornacek beating Russell. Acrobatic basket, and we've seen several of them from Brian Russell tonight. Uh, he, he's just been Mr. Excitement tonight for Utah. Now, I know Jeff Hornacek. He's, he's covered every single stat tonight. Not only the points, but the five rebounds. And also, he has four steals in this game. And a hooking foul. Let's see if it's Kemp, and, and if it's Sean Kemp, that'll be four. It is. Sean Kemp picks up his fourth foul with less than four minutes going by here in the third. Now, they've got to get him out right now. They're bringing Sam Perkins. Now, you'll see when he goes down inside, keep an eye on, on the arm. There's the hook right there, and he catches him right on the hip. And the referee from this side of the floor had the perfect call. So for the second straight game, Sean Kemp is in foul trouble. Perkins replaces him. Kemp, remember, the hero in the finish, playing with five fouls in game two in Seattle. Uh, as they catch Spencer down inside. Here's the Sonic foul situation. Kemp with four. Shrimp and Urban Johnson with three. Spencer picking up his uh, foul, and that was a three-second violation, three. so no personal on Spencer. There was no reason for him to be in the three-second lane. He was out of the action completely. Peyton trying to post up, and here is oh, Brian Russell. Oh, great play against Shrimp. Send it. Yes. He anticipated Deadlift Shrimp perfectly on that play. I say He's doing so many intangibles, Dick. All the intangibles. 20 turnovers by the Sonics. Peyton comes back with a turnaround, and Carl Malone the rebound. That's his eighth rebound of the game. The Jazz lead by three. And a foul called against Gary Payton, who has picked up his second personal foul. 
Now, right here, they're trying to post up Peyton. See, Russell gets a hand on it. Then he outquicks. But keep a keep a eye on the left. You're, you're seeing now Johnson's trying to measure it, but he decided not to go for the foul. Johnson playing with three. Stockton way off the mark on that jump attempt. One for six from the field for John Stockton. 50% shooter, as you mentioned during the year, well under 40 in the playoff or in the series. Knocked away, last touched by the Jazz. It seems like Utah is winning by 15. And you look up and you say, oops, only by three. As poorly as Seattle is playing. All the guys in foul trouble. That's all the technical fouls. All the turnovers. You're down three. That does not bode well for Utah. Perkins. This is from downtown and the rebound by Carl Malone. Say hey, Jeff Hornacek is playing a great, great game. Although he tried to lead Stockton there and threw it away. But Stockton got bumped and he lost his balance, and that's the reason why he could not get to that pass. You mentioned Hornacek, 20 points, six off the glass, and six assists. The NBA Playoffs on TNT are brought to you by GMC, putting you comfortably in command. And by Dutch Boy Paints, give your home the lasting look of Dutch Boy. Turns out we're part of the biggest event during the summer games. The beer run. The Bud World Party continues around the clock, around the world. With Sierra's.